We have the ACC championship game, number 14 Louisville against number four Florida. Yeah, number four Florida State. Uh, FSU is a two and a half point favorite in the game. Carries an over under 48 and a half points. It kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. And uh, I said on ACC, on ABC <laughs> is the network in which this game is featured. And it's played at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. And we are looking at potential rain in this one as well. I I don't understand why we're not just playing all the conference championships indoors. Most of them already are anyway. If it's at a neutral site, that's just my thing. I believe football should be played outdoors, but when you're doing the conference championship, it, whatever. Um, the total did open at 49.5 points, and it was bet up heavily to 53.5, and, and now it's bet way back down. Like I really cannot keep up with uh, the movement in these sides, and, and especially with the totals. I, I, like, I don't know what size is the right side. Do I believe the bet up? Do I believe the bet down? Are we am I or re- overreacting to weather on Tuesday and betting down? I don't even know. Uh, but Louisville, it's been one sided action for them. Uh, obviously, in in response to Jordan Travis not playing this game and how Florida State performed against Florida without Travis, it, it was uh, plus five and a half. Louisville was plus five and a half at one point here. Um, Rodemaker looked. Um, Well, he's not Jordan Travis, is he, against Florida. He had 134 yards passing, 48% completion. He was overall off target. He took three sacks. It was not great. The offense only picked up 57% of available yards against Florida, who, to be fair, was fighting for a bowl game. But, like, the Las Vegas Bowl, they they weren't playing for a high-level bowl game. I don't think that the the, uh, drive from Florida was there other than just to knock off their rivals at home. Uh, and if you're looking at Louisville, you know, they have one of the better pass rushes nationally, and so I think they can get after Rodemaker and uh, make him fairly uncomfortable. Louisville is also 7th in quality possessions allowed on defense, but they are 84th in points allowed on those quality possessions. So they're, they are allowing teams to score on the very few good drives that they get. Uh, we're looking at an injury bit on that side of the ball. Starting corner Jarvis Brownlee, he did return in Week 13, but he was seriously limited in his snaps. He's been kind of hurt on and off, has not played a full healthy game since week seven. Um, On the other side of the ball, Florida State has one of the best secondaries in the country. And uh, we're talking about Jack Plummer here. Louisville, excellent team. Jack Plummer is still unreliable, uh, to put it nicely. I worry about his ability to get the ball to his receivers when they don't get separation, when they're NFL open, not college open, uh, you know, be able to lead them. He just doesn't do that very well. And he has 14 turnover-worthy throws this season, 11 picks, and boy, when he makes bad decisions, he makes horrific decisions, and at times he can be streakly inaccurate. He's played well in three of his last four games, which is good, but when he's bad, he's really, really bad. So I worry about going up against an elite defense, especially an elite coverage unit uh, with Plummer here. Can Louisville keep him clean as well? I do worry about that on both sides. Uh, you know, Plummer's the third most pressured quarterback in the ACC, and Florida State has the fifth highest sack rate over the last three games, eighth on the year. Jared Verse, of course, you know the name well, future first-round NFL draft pick, 49 pressures and eight sacks on the season. I just got to say, Brett, if you would have told me when Plummer transferred from Purdue to Cal, hey, hey Kelly, one day in his college career still, he's going to be playing in the ACC championship game as a less-than-a-field-goal favorite starting quarterback with a team that has a chance to ruin someone's CFP hopes. I I, would have just looked at you like, what are you talking about? But that's the era... That's the that's the era of of the transfer portal and just how crazy everything is. Um, good for him. I mean, I'm I'm excited for this Louisville team. What they've accomplished is great. Uh, earlier, I said Washington reminded me a bit of 2022 TCU. Honestly, Florida State does too. And without Travis, perhaps this Florida State squad is power rated more in the category of 2015 Michigan State. Actually, a team that deservingly made the CFP wow. with a strong resume, but wasn't power rated at an elite level. Uh, that's probably a bit harsh for this Florida State team but the drop off it it is significant without Travis and I think you've already seen the offense regress a little bit my numbers have Florida State minus nine and a half in this game now like I talked about earlier with SMU before people freak out and say Kelly's saying Florida State's going by nine and a half I'm not explicitly accounting for Travis's injury that said like I talked about earlier I don't believe Jordan Travis or any college quarterback is worth seven points to the spread they're just not so my model does suggest there might be some value in backing Florida State here if you're laying less than a field goal as the line currently stands. It was only one game, but the offensive regression for Florida State with Rodemaker at quarterback was noticeable. The Knowles offensive unit ranking fell from number nine nationally to number 12 for me. 
that's a that's a significant fall in one game this late in the year. The Florida State offense probably isn't even the number twelve unit in the country, you know, w- without Travis. But with Louisville's defense only being number twenty six, I still think that even without Travis and, and Rodemaker in there, can we get to a wash there? Like, can the Florida State offense just get a stalemate? Because if they can, then I think we're in good shape. Like, just be top thirty good and then let your defense take care of it. I think that's what they're going to be able to do. Even if they can't get there, the defense should still be able to pick up the slack. The Knolls are up to a season-best number seven on that side of the ball. They should be able to dictate the game to a certain extent against this Louisville offense, which I also have number 26. Louisville's number 26 on both sides. Very balanced team uh, hovering in that mid-20s. Tells you where they are from a power rating standpoint, but they're very accomplished. I picked Louisville third in the ACC in the preseason, due in large part to the easy schedule. They did me one better. They reached the champ game. It's been an outstanding first year for Jeff Brom and his return to his alma mater. The cards are number 17 on my overachievers list. Florida State's number 13 for what's that worth. With everything on the line for Florida State, I think the defense rises to the occasion. Rodemaker gives them just enough to win this game, even if it isn't by the 9.5 points my model suggests. Again, not explicitly accounting for the Travis uh, absence here. Florida State wins. Florida State to the CFP for me. Uh, you're talking about the how much Travis is worth. I initially docked Florida State six full points. Uh, I think that was a little bit aggressive, to be honest. Uh, I, I derated them four points uh, this week. I, I think four is probably the more, uh, I, I don't want to say conservative number, uh, the more level-headed <laughs> number, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you say no quarterback is worth seven points to the spread, EJ Warner. <laughs> He's now in the transfer portal, actually. He just hit the portal. Some team's going to get a very accomplished quarterback on the roster for for temple i think he's worth that for another team probably not either way i florida state though far i I mean louisville has some really nice pass catching weapons but my goodness florida state's receiving room is is an embarrassment of riches right now it's it's one of the better receiving rooms in the whole country so if rodemaker can't work it out with them um then he's just not ready to to be a starting quarterback and he's a veteran on this team so you know i don't know this time will ever come um I, you know, now that we've talked through it, I, I think I still probably take Florida State to win the game. And if that's the case, I think the total has been bet down too low. Um, if I'm taking Florida State, I'm taking over the points. If I'm leaning Louisville to win this game, I take under the points. Uh, that's the way I see it. I, I think if Louisville's winning this game, I don't believe it's because of an offensive shootout. I think it's because Rodemaker is just not playing that well and their defense is getting home and uh, disrupting their their drives. So if there was a play to make right now, I think the totals overreacted, especially if it's in response to the weather. Um, rain just doesn't, unless it's driving rain, doesn't really affect totals that much. Uh, and we have no idea. Dude, it's Tuesday. And this, this isn't a week-long weather event that's happening in Charlotte. It's like a day or two. So I'm, I'm going to play over 48 and a half uh, if I had to pick something right here, right now.